Morning, everyone. I understand it's sunny somewhere, but um, today we've just got good gardening, watering weather. And uh, uh, it is, yeah, continue to pray for those who've been impacted by uh, the floods. Um, also give thanks because apparently the floods, the rainfall is helping get rid of the mouse plague. Uh, so it's an interesting country, isn't it? We can have with bushfire alerts and floods, mouse plagues, you know, also, yeah, welcome to Australia. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you that we're here. We're, we've got this roof over our head, which you've provided. We've got the ability to look at your word, which you've given. And we want to serve you because of your gift of life to us. So help us to take hold what it is you want to say to us. And, uh, and I pray that we don't just leave here having uh, sung and listen to readings and listen to a message and chatted but we leave here knowing that we've met with you uh, and that you uh, have been at work within us help me us to become more like you lord jesus so holy spirit help us to to grow and father thank you that we can we can come and worship uh, what a precious gift you give praise you for it amen and nope there we go Bing. Um, so um we're going to pick up from last week where we left off because it's only a couple of weeks course to easter um you know uh, hopefully you, you might have been thinking about easter and what that could mean uh you've maybe been chatting about easter and and what that could mean uh hopefully it's not around the hot cross buns and the chocolate eggs that you've been thinking and talking about but the fact is that we're coming up to one of the significant, most important events in history, an event that changed the world, uh, and more importantly, has changed us. Uh, so we come to celebrate that in a couple of weeks. And so hopefully that you, you know, that, that message is what we are getting out to people uh, and to family and friends as we get excited, hopefully about Easter coming up. Um, anyway, I want to pick up from where we uh, le left off from last week. Uh, Mark, because last week we looked at the verse, do not let your hearts be troubled, trust in God, uh, and trust also in me, and that we had this opportunity to see how these words can speak into our own lives, uh, especially when we're facing troubles and so forth, uh, but also the lives of those around us who might be troubled as well, that you know, we can find an answer, a hope for that trouble in Christ, and we don't have to remain troubled uh, when we trust in God. And I want to jump a bit further, uh, uh, further into the conversation that Jesus was having, uh, and and then we come across this in verse fifteen, where he says, you know, he says to his disciples, just think about this. He says, "If you love me," you know, I go, "Whoa, yeah." I mean, if I said that, say to Faye. If you love me, you know, her response would probably be, what do you mean you're asking if I love you? you know, what do you mean if? You know, don't you know? And then I'd probably have to explain myself more clearly and saying, look, I'm just talking about a Bible passage here. Um, but it's a, quite a confronting question that Jesus is saying to his friends that is there with at this moment if you love me obey my commandments pretty straightforward really uh, and uh, not too complicated uh, for those with him and for us who read it today um, jesus saying you know you have an opportunity to love me and if you're going to do that do what i ask I mean, when you stop and think about it, really the responsibility of a disciple is to love and obey. Um, you know, and that love is that sincere, deeply respectful love that we have. And in this case, for Jesus. And also it's that particular love that, he, that he's asking here, 
defines so much of who Jesus is and what Jesus has said. In these verses, they point, it points out the fact that, you know, if you love Jesus, one of the things, one of the first things that's going to happen is that you're actually going to obey what the Lord and Saviour says, his commandments. I mean, after all, he has demonstrated his love for them and soon will make the ultimate love sacrifice for them by dying on the cross. And not just for them, but for us as well. And of course, love has been a big thing for Jesus. He, you know, he's told his disciples, love your enemies. And I can imagine the conversation that went with that. You know, like, you have not met my next door neighbor. You know, and you want me to love him, the neighbor from hell. And Jesus says, love him. Love your enemies. You know, he says, and more importantly, he does say, love your neighbor. He says, love God. Not just a little bit, but with your entire being, because that sums up all the commandments. And he also says, love each other. Lord, do you know who's at my church? And you want me to love them? To which Jesus says, yes, love them. Love them with a deep, sincere, respectful love that wants the best for them. Earlier, Jesus has said, so now I'm giving you a new commandment, love each other just as I have loved you, you should love each other. And your love for each other will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So love has been a big thing for Jesus. And what is at the core of this sincere and deeply respectful love is the desire to do more for Jesus than to do the minimum. I mean, this love for Jesus doesn't motivate the response of what is the least amount I can do to be okay with God. Yeah. If you love me, obey my commandments. That shouldn't response, our response should not be, what's the least I need to do to be okay with that? Now, this, this love is to motivate us to actually want to do as much as we can. It's, it's a love that says, what else can I do? It's the kind of love that we appreciate in our relationships you know when you've got someone who's go, who's thinking what else can i do for you you doesn't it make you feel great doesn't it make you feel special and if you really love someone you know aren't we thinking what can i do for that person what can i do to help what can i do to to you know to make them feel you know better do something nice for them thinking that way and that's what Jesus says. If you love me, it's going to motivate you to obey my commandments. Now, I am sure as followers of Jesus, um, we wouldn't consciously think that, okay, what is the bare minimum I need to do? You know, I, I, I think of myself, I, don't, I wouldn't consciously go, what's the bare minimum? But lives tend to get busy and, uh, and they tend to get filled with things. And there is the danger subconsciously that when you add in the demands of, say, a job, of family, of health, of church, and also maybe wanting some me time, you know, I just, I just want some me time, I'm a little bit, of, it can become that we go, well, what is the minimum I need to do to be okay with God? I mean, the scriptures are full of people who start strong but get distracted. Yeah. They say they love God and will obey his commandments, but their lives don't reflect that. And God has a tendency to confront them over it. 
you know, you, you read you know, through the Old Testament, uh, New Testament. Yeah. And the beautiful thing is that God doesn't, when he confronts them, it's usually to encourage them to recommit themselves to loving and following our Lord. He said, one to the seven churches, you know, recapture that first love. In Micah, he goes, you know, he says to the people, where's your first love? Now, if we say, if we read that, if you love me and obey my commands, uh, and, and I ask that question, so how are you going and doing that? And if you can say unconditionally that, yes, uh, I am obeying the, his commands to the best of my ability, you know, which, by the way, I believe is achievable. It's not an unachievable goal. It's that, that I, the best of my ability, I'm seeking to follow his commands. That doesn't mean I've got it all right. It doesn't mean I've got it all together. You know, it, it means that I'm working on things that God is revealing in my life with God's help to become more Christ-like every day. I'm seeking to be like Jesus every day. And if you can say yes to that, can I encourage you to share with those around you, especially your brothers and sisters, the blessings that come from loving Christ that way and seeking to obey his commandments every day? Of going, the joy of finding out God has revealed something to me you know, and I'm working on this part of my life so that I can say yes, yes to what Jesus has said. Can we share that joy with each other? Can we share the blessings of that with each other? Because we all need encouragement. Now, it, the great thing, of course, is if, you go, if you've gone, oh, well, um, I'm not sure how good I'm going at obeying those commandments. I mean, you may have thought of a few things that have popped in your mind. Well, yeah, I know Jesus has said I should do this, but I'm, <clears throat> I'm procrastinating about it. I'm not deliberately disobeying him. I'm, I'm just maybe dawdling. You know, like when you say to a kid, go tidy up your room. Yeah. You know? Okay. Two hours later, they've managed to you know, get halfway to their room. The great thing is that Jesus says, I can help. I mean, Scripture is full of people who have fallen short of the mark. You know, I just, you know, it's a classic sort of when you think about it, like uh, Peter, for example. I mean, he got up there and said, I'll die for you, Jesus. I love you so much that I'll die for you. I don't know him. I don't know him. Nope. Nope. I don't know him. The other disciples said, yeah, we'll be there with Jesus. Yeah. You know? And where are you guys? And yet Jesus restores them. And, event, and I love the scene with Peter, of course. Peter, do you love me? Well, yes, feed my sheep. He restores Peter. And that's what Jesus can do for us as well. He can restore us. We can change to be able to say, well, you know what? I am to the best of my abilities with God's help obeying his commandments. And the way that that happens is a change in my attitude and my decision to actually do it. And one of the ways of doing that, of course, is to grasp fully the fact that we are loved by God. That Christ loved us. Not just learning the verses, you know, John 3, 16, but owning such verses and being able to say, this is what God's love has done for me personally. This is how God's love moves me and shapes me. And because of that love, I can say to God, I love you. I love you. 
I have this sincere and deep respect for my creator and I want to follow you and do your commandments. And the more we can grasp what, how much God loves us, the more easy it will be for verse 15 to become of, yes, that's me. I love him and I obey him. Another thing that Jesus says that out of our love for our Lord there's going to happen is that we will receive another advocate. He says, and I will ask the Father, you know, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. And Jesus uh, is, he says that, you know, that advocate is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. You know, so we one of the great things is if we are following Jesus and we love him and obey him, he says, I'm going to sense another advocate. I've been your advocate. I'm going to go to the cross and be your advocate for your sins, but I'm going to actually not leave you alone. I'm not going to abandon you. You know, you're never going to have to face life alone. I'm going to ask my father to send the Holy Spirit, the paracletus. Uh, the one, the spirit of truth, who will come and be with you forever. He will never, ever leave you. And interesting enough, everything that the spirit will be described as doing is what Jesus has already done. Uh, in other words, he's continuing that same ministry that Jesus has been doing on earth. And also, interestingly enough, it points out, of course, Jesus says the world can't receive him, just like they haven't received me, because it isn't looking for him, and they don't recognize him, which is a bit of a reminder for us. That we, sometimes, you know, we, I hear the conversation, and sometimes I say it as well, surely they should know, you know, Surely they should know that they, that's wrong or whatever. But if they're not looking for God, for the Holy Spirit, and they're not seeing him, how can they know? It's only when someone maybe says, you need to look over here. See the, the one on who went to the cross and then came down from the cross? Look there, and then you'll be able to know. This Holy Spirit was with us. He's the comforter. It depends on which translation you've got. He's got the comforter, the helper, the advocate. He is God's presence in the world now. And he's the one who's going to be with us forever and Jesus goes on to say the world doesn't know him but you but you you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you what an incredibly intimate relationship we have with our creator, God. The fact that the Holy Spirit lives within us. I don't know how many times I've probably mentioned this, but that song, you know, God is watching us from a distance, used to drive me nuts. Because that is so untrue. God is not distant. He is very, very present. So Jesus says, if you love me, if you love me, do what I ask of you. Obey my commandments. And I will give you someone who will be with you to help you do that. If you love me, if you love me, 
if you love me. As I said earlier, consciously, as believers, I think we can say, yes, I love Jesus and I will obey him. But life will distract us. It will crowd in. We need to be listening to the one that Jesus has sent. And we need to ask ourselves with all honesty, am I obeying his commandments? Because if the answer is no, we have the Holy Spirit there to help us to change that to a yes. If we love him. If you feel that you have let him down, I've got to say you're in great company. Uh, to be honest, you can look around here and you're in very good company because I know that a number of us in conversations have made that statement. I feel like I've let him down. You're in great company with all sorts of famous Christians down through the ages. And yet the thing that changed them was that God came alongside and said, do you love me? Then let's go forward together. Do you love him? Then obey what he is asking you to do today. Let's pray. Lord, We're in a world that will crowd in. And I ask for your forgiveness for allowing that to happen in my life, uh, in the life uh, of us as a church, and sadly, in the life of us as a country. But I thank you that, as you said, if we love you and if we follow you, you will give us one who will never leave us, God present in the world right now, not in, not in the, as a man, but as res residing within us as believers, as your people. One who comes to comfort and to challenge and to help us grow to give us words to say to, to ourselves and those around us, to give us those convictions that things are not right and we need to do something about it. So Holy Spirit, for those of us here who are looking at this verse and going, I'm not sure I can say yes with confidence. Speak to us both gently but with conviction. Remind us that you are a God who is forgiving, is full of grace, but is also not content to let us be and remain where we are, but to call us to what we can be as your child. I ask for anyone here who's feeling that they have majorly let you down, that you remind them that that's, you went to the cross for them and you love them so much that you will walk with them and help them follow you and obey your commandments. I pray that you will instill in them such a deep love for you that it starts to become amazing as they see you at work in their lives. And for those of us who have been able to say yes to the best of my ability with your help, God, I am obeying your commands. Urge us on. 
Help us to share the blessings of that. To be your instruments of encouragement to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you that you did way back then say, I'm going to ask my father to send another advocate, another one who will stand for us. And he will come and he will reside within us. I thank you that you do not abandon us, but you equip us to face this world. And you remind us of the depth of love you have shown us. Help us to love you. I ask that in your precious name. Amen.